as soon as you are. We need to go get rid of some more halflings. All right, so this is episode three of the Mirror Chronicles. We're the old boys club, of course. And uh, the party are still down in the sewers of the city of Wild. They are dealing with the wild gang of halflings. So um, after disposing of those two halflings, checking out the sleeping quarters, you see that the uh, sewers continue with a staircase nearby, stone staircase that goes downwards. Oh, all right. Feeling more like home. We're going into the earth. Good. That's right. Yeah. How much does this keg of ale weigh? That's a good question. Like, are we talking full size proper keg? Uh, or little cask? Yeah, I'm going to say it's fairly heavy. It's 10 pounds for a keg, for a smaller keg. Yeah. Oh, girl, I'll just take it with me. Ah! ah. <laughs> oh, we could take care of that and just tap it right now. Or actually, you know what? I have a better plan because, you know, uh, I don't have spells that can reach out and destroy things. Oh, man. Can't wait until I can use my tiles. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty. <clears throat> so we're headed towards the sheets, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So going by the previous map, this is the kind of the hallway, hallway that was going off to that left-hand side. Yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, well. nothing. But we do have a quiet dwarf. Deed, do you want to scout ahead? Yeah, we were making some noise here, so. Do you want a, uh, a stealth check? Um, yeah, you could, you could uh, hide behind some of these barrels or crates here. Okay. So you can do a stealth check. 23. You're so sneaky. So sneaky. So what did you roll? 23. Oh, geez. Wow. Man. All right. I might not so, be able to use a uh, bow. <laughs> you notice uh, you get you get ahead here. Deep gets ahead. The dwarf rogue and hides um, behind one of the crates. And uh, just as you do, you notice uh, another one of the halflings coming out of these doors. Okay. And um, you see, there's another one behind him in the doorway there. So the my companions can obviously see this too. Then. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'll stay hidden there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, get up behind them if they do end up charging. Hey, uh, you, you, uh, big dwarf down there. Hey, uh, what are you doing? Did we bring the food with us? Oh, we did not. We just have your barrel. We do have a keg, though. I'm bringing you this keg of ale. Not really. From where? The cook told us to bring it down. We hire people to help the cook. Who are you? We're the brewers. Yeah. Are you going to try and uh, deceive them or something, or you're just chatting away? Oh, oh I'll yeah. just casually keep walking towards them while we're brewing. All right. He says, I'm going to have to get Mac Meg to check on this. This is full on a deception tap check. Yeah. OK. Roll it. <laughs> yeah. I can't do guidance on myself for this one, but. <laughs> I'll take my one now. Oh no. <laughs> Why do we roll so many of these? Why? So uh, he no, just nothing on the other end. He just uh, beats you on that check and says, uh, uh, Yeah, hey, I am shocked. <laughs> hey, uh, get Meg out here. There's some uh, dwarves wandering around. Yeah, okay. Meg. All right. Ding, oh, it's ding, on. Ding. Steve, do you feel good there? Yeah, I'm waiting for the biggest, baddest dude to walk by. Another halfling comes out, um, and uh, he says, uh, what's going on? 
Ah, some dwarves wandering around with a keg. That seems a little suspicious. We like to drink. What's in the keg? Beer. Um, I'm with Jewel moving forward a little bit as we talk to them. Look at Jeez, you guys. Holy moly. We were partying up in the bugbear den thing and stumbled through this freaking wall. It just kind of vanished and we kind of fell through. Now we're wandering around trying to find the washroom while we're at it. And we found beer and a chef and it was all really nice. Okay, so he walks up and he says, hey, if you need a washroom, it's right there. <laughs> uh, the sewer is right there. And he goes, uh, let me just, no, oh, that, hey, that's Queen's Ale. That's good stuff. Were you I thinking could've... of selling this? Oh, I'm thinking of drinking it. We got good stuff? This is a gift for you. What do you mean, hey, selling it? Oh, no, I'm not giving this away. What are you, crazy? Maybe, uh, hey, you know what? Uh, we'll pay extra money if you throw that weasel in it. Uh, you know, oh. we throw a perfectly good weasel into some ale. Okay, Harn, Harn is now getting very actually kind of worried that you're going to try to sell this keg of ale on him. <laughs> he's moderately possessive. And <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> I don't think he's going to give it up. <laughs> Ignore my friend here for a moment. How much are you talking for this ale? What are you willing to pay me for it? Uh, for that, uh, it's not full. Uh, you know, I'd give you, uh, I'd give you 10 gold for it. Mm. No. <laughs> um, okay, how about we let you le live and uh, we take the keg for free? Hmm. No. I think, how about you give us a lot of money Give me about say fifty gold. I don't cave your head in. Uh, he grabs <laughs> hold of the he grabs the yes. keg no. and he tries to pull it out of Stinky's grip. So it's a strength contest. Uh, you know what? I'm gonna end up smashing it with my hammer. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Two. Well, isn't that surprising? Uh, strength plus two, so that's gonna give me a nineteen. Oh. Dude. And you push him away right in front of the cleric. He goes, okay, 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 we'll do it the hard way. Meg, Meg, there's some tough guys out here. Right on. Hey, he's gonna turn his back. I'm gonna put the keg down on the ground and I'm gonna swing my hammer. And... I was about to say, buddy's going into the drink. <laughs> I'm just gonna hit him. No one touches my ale. I mean, right. <laughs> there's a lot of things. Friends and beer, That's don't mess with them. <laughs> um. Give this guy a shot straight into the drink with it. Harn can go first, of course, though, because he was fighting over the beer. Oh, yeah. I think I should get advantage on my initiative. Yeah, Harn has advantage surprising the halfling, and then we'll do initiative after that. Okay. Okay, I'm going to smoke this halfling with my hammer because for trying to take my ale is really, that's, that's, not, that's not good. Hey! You guys see that? Mm -hmm. Is that a 20? That's a 20. Dude! Oh, man. That's a 20. A 20! Yes, right. no dial. Let's see it. Let's see if there's extra effects. Uh, Damn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but double damage. Okay, so I just roll the D8 twice and add my strength, right? Correct. And you add your modifier twice, too. Oh. Ooh, super crits. Nice. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm going to do six points of damage. Total? Uh, total. You know, that was kind of <laughs> anticlimactic. I'm really sorry, but I rolled <laughs> I rolled two twos on the eight-sided dice, and plus two is six. So <laughs> it could have been really good, though, right? All right. Let's do initiative. All right. Come oh, on. man. Oh, man. Oh. At least it wasn't on a uh, an attack, attack. roll. No. I got a fifteen. I got a. Hold on, 16. hold on. I do yeah. this. Uh, I have Sorry. a very complicated system. Deep. Yeah. What did you, you want? My initiative. Yeah. Ooh. Eleven. And Brule. Sixteen. Harn. Ten. And Theris. <laughs> fifteen. 
All right. So this halfling um, has uh, another attack. So he goes after the wizard who attacked him. And uh, that is a 14 with his uh, short sword. Ooh. Probably doesn't uh, actually hit. You're armored up, dude. That's going to miss. Nice. Because even our wizard wears heavy armor. Chain mail. <laughs> it's just like a bunch of little Sherman tanks rolling around. Right. So that halfling uses disadvantage, uh, uses a bonus action to disengage and run back here. Um, this one goes after the paladin. Thank you. Come and attacks right you with a short sword with a 17. That uh, misses. And uh, also disengages back little here. Rogy little sneaks. Um, this no. one comes over here and shoots a crossbow at the cleric and misses. Oh, wow. Uh, this one runs forward, does the same thing. And that is uh, another 17 with a crossbow to hit the cleric. Misses. AC 18. Nice. First, second level. Wow, that's interesting for the party. Right. I know we have some really like we're like a bunch of little tanks running around. Uh... All right. So then um, the this uh, the one female halfling, intense, probably Meg. She takes her crossbow and shoots at the paladin, and misses as well. <laughs> so that dice is out. <laughs> um, deep into the dice deal with that one. Man, I'm so you're still hidden, Mr. Rogue. No, I'm still hidden, but she's far enough away that I can't really. Um, so I can't attack her with advantage. Well, you're still, you're like low on the initiative here. So, oh, sorry, you're right. It's not deep. Yeah, it's I'm 11, cool. right? Brule. Yeah. yeah. All wondering. right. So I was about to click on the one I wanted to run up. The one closest to me there that's just kind of on the other side of the ladder. No, no, no. Like on my side. Yeah, that one. Correct. Uh, I'm going to attack him. Looks like a female or a little guy with long hair. Long hair. That He's a is... greaser halfling. <laughs> <laughs> that is... Come on, Apple, go back up so we can. Uh, there it is. A 17 is a hit? That's a hit, yeah. <clears throat> oh, wow. That's uh, seven damage. All right. <clears throat> and now we go to Theris. So Meg is still at the, at, in the center there, right? So and he's Ferris. got one in front of him. So we got five in total, yeah? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, yeah? Yeah. Um, got three spell slots left. Let's go with Bane. Ooh. So the two guys on the other side of the bridge and... The one down by Meg. Yeah. All of them. Those three casting Bane. Okay. Uh, another 20. <laughs> now I roll a 20. So um, <laughs> two of them definitely make their saves. Well, that's not fun. So two of them succeeded. <laughs> yeah. Third guy, he out. Third guy. Um, yeah, so they they have that uh, D4 to roll. Um, guy's out. Okay. So, yeah, he's got every time he rolls a D4, yeah. he takes it off. All right. Um, Dave. All right. Let's I step out to assist my uh, my companion right beside me. Okay. Hopefully succeeding in a sneak attack with my short sword. 
Um, hitting AC 18. Yeah. For six points of piercing damage. Okay. Still standing? Yeah. Oh, wait, I've, and I have my sneak attack bonus to that, right? Sneak attack. Yeah. Sneak attack. Why is this not? Dagger in your short ribs. Stagger, stagger. Cruel, next, cruel. Next D6. Fall into the swamp. So, oh, I rolled a one. Yeah. Dude. Okay, so um, I do get another attack, though, right? Uh, if you have a weapon in your other hand, yeah. Yeah. That one hits uh, AC 19. Hit. For six points of damage. Okay. They're still standing. Okay. Um, mm. And it is Harn's turn. Is it actually, is it possible? So I moved five feet out. Did those two attacks? Could I move back between those crates to let my friends through if they start steamrolling? Um, would, I still, would I still stay within five feet? Oh, right here? Yeah. Yeah. Without provoking attack opportunity? Uh, yeah, you're still right. within their reach. Okay. Okay, so is it possible for Harn to identify the, the Meg person as the leader, meaning that she's the only female? Would that be an obvious choice for him? Yeah, you, you know her name is Meg, so the chances are that's Meg. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to uh, I'm going to cast a, a spell. I'm going to cast chromatic orb, and I'm going to hurl a four inch diameter sphere of poison to, at her. And does oh, I get plus five. That's right. Jeez. So thirteen plus five, eighteen. Does eighteen hit her with the sphere of dew? Yes. Yes, it does. Yes. Okay, let's see if I can roll some better damage this time because that other one was really pathetic on a critical. I just felt bad. Seven, 13, and seven is 20 points of damage. Oh, wow. Oh. Bam. Wow. All right. So the spell hits uh, what appears to be their leader. Um, right in the face. <laughs> This uh, halfling runs across to go after the cleric, and um, the female halfling shouts out, take care of it, boys! And uh, this one shoots a uh, crossbow over there at the cleric. Uh, 22. That is. Oh, and no. That is, oh, minimum damage, though. You got lucky on that. Uh, <laughs> Three piercing damage. The the halfling that's closest. Oh, sorry, it's three plus. Speaking of sneak attacks. Oh, great. Uh, it's three. It, oh, you, I rolled a one. Four, <laughs> four piercing damage, and then the one that's close to you goes after the cleric as well, but um, a twelve is going to be a miss, I believe. Yeah. So two halflings move in here with uh, the paladin and the rogue. One goes after the paladin. Uh, 17, I think, is just miss. Just a miss. I end up blocking that with my shield. So the other one goes after the rogue on the side. That's a miss to, I think, a 12. Yeah. And then Meg shoots her crossbow at the paladin as well. And that's, uh, that's a hit. 20, not natural. <laughs> yeah, we can see that. That's not good. It's OK. And that is seven, a sneak attack as well. That's 12 piercing damage on the Paladin. Oh, that, that hurt. I'm still standing, but that hurt. That's going to be a mark. You got more than one hit point. You're fine. And after she does that, she just goes, when you're done with them, throw them in the sewers. And she marches off. Oh, well. 
And it is uh, Brule's turn. All right, this little halfling's getting smoked. Yeah. Woohoo! I can't believe it. Hold on. We just throw them in the bag, take them with us. Yeah, thanks for showing the camera. It's perfect. Got a 20. Yeah, just nice. add to the rest. I actually, oh, dude, that's sweet. I actually crit. Whoa. How messed up is this? Yes. Oh my god! How how messed up is this halfling looking? Yes. So we have a uh, we have a special. You know what? It's my first crit. I'm gonna smite. Oh, and this is high on the D120 chart. I rolled 107. Wow. You may not so, have. So uh, that is uh, lose an ear. Nice. Pop his ear off. Yep. And yeah, there you just crushed. Uh, what's the damage for that one? Oh, it's going to be ridiculous. Huge. Plus mighty. Six, eight. Of course, I rolled terrible. I right, made it a little better. 21. All right. Yeah, you crush it. Lose it. The, the earless halfling falls into the sewer. And then I'm going to just step right up onto the next nice. halfway. <laughs> All right. Thank you, sir. And it is Theris's turn. Oh, uh, let's bash that guy's head in. Fighting style this level, or do I get that next level? 17 to hit. Hit. Oh, dude. For the big. <laughs> Four points of damage. I'm going to use my bonus action to uh, use my War Priest ability and take another shot at him. Natural 20. Wow. Where are the roll now? Finally. Yeah. Ah, that's OK. I'll take it. <laughs> Is that dice just a yes and no? Yeah. Nice. Where'd you get that? Sorry. Um. I think it was from a company called, um, I think they're just called RPG Dice or something. Um, cool. Yeah. So do I roll the dice and just times it by two or do I roll the dice twice? You roll the dice twice. Yeah, plus you add your modifier twice. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 11 points. All right. He is down. All right. Do you use any of your movement? Movement to move up on the guy that's on the other side of the bridge. Okay. 15, 20, 25. Oh, that's not good. Right. Perfect <laughs> location. If I'm I think not going to make it all the way across, can I, I stick it on the location. other side? Uh, Dave, it's your turn. <laughs> yeah. All right. Same drill. First attack is going to hit. attack. Well, hopefully. Um, AC 12. Uh, that is a miss. OK, second attack is uh, AC 10. Wow. That is a miss, too, yeah. Sorry, guys. Dude. Sorry, all we right. just had two 20s in a row. It's OK. Yeah, nobody right? can hit all I the time. Been doing uh, really well. Don't give up on me. No, Hard is uh, Hard is just back, back here, uh, just five feet back here. With um, yep, I know where you. You you took out the shadow dude in one hit, so you you did well, man. Forgot about that. Thank you. I needed okay. that. Uh, <laughs> all I'm, I've done is crush a halfling. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna just pick up my uh, keg of ale, uh, my queen's ale, because I'm pretty happy to have that. I now that I know this is the good stuff. Um. And I'm going to start moving myself towards where um, Dev is. And yeah, so I can kind of get in there in case there's anything that pops out. And then start going after um, the, the, the poisoned one. So I'm just not leaving my ale behind. Or your weasel. Go for the eyes! Oh, my weasel usually just kind of rides around, you know, in my backpack or kind of follows along. It's, you know, she's... Gus right. is a cool weasel. You All don't right. want to see him when he's drinking, though. It's bad. No. 
<laughs> so um, this halfling runs over to the other side, um, jumps up on the crate here, okay. and goes after the rope because he spotted you now. And that is a 20, not natural. With sneak attack, that's 11 hit points damage, 11 piercing. And I am going to use an ability I just got and forgot I had to reduce that damage with my shield, with a reaction. Sweet. By eight. All right. And can you dodge? <laughs> yes, um, it's called the interception style. The other halfling goes after the paladin and rolls a 21. Darn it. I'm going to get... And that is sneak that. attack as well. It was oh. worth it. And that's... Oof. 12 hit points damage. And I'm down. No way. Yeah. <clears throat> and it is. I was just about to heal myself. Then you hear a voice echoing through uh, the doors over here. Did you throw them in the sewers yet? And it is Brule's turn. Okay. Brule is making a death save. Yes. <laughs> Brule failed his first death save. Oh. No. Oh. the man on the bridge over troubled water. Damn, you <laughs> the bridge. So can I make it to beside Brule? Uh, you can go into Harn space temporarily, but then you have to move out. Because I want to get uh, cure wounds on him. Yeah, you can move in there, do cure wounds, and then you got to move away. Then uh, let's do that, because that'll be the end of my spells. There we go. Poof. Let's get you back up on your feet. Oh, not bad. Six. Six hit points for the paladin. All right. And it oh. is. For my bonus action, can I drink the potion of healing that I have? <laughs> There's no such thing, but nice try. Um, <laughs> Dave, it's your turn again. All right. So I am not assistant this time, so sneak attacks are the question. Not that I was hitting anyway. I'll, I'll continue on with that halfling on the floor there. Sorry, my computer kind of bugged out there. Did you hear me? Yep. Yeah, okay. we heard you. Perfect. So first attack, hitting AC 14. That is a hit. They just have leather armor. Perfect. Um, doing... 10 points of damage. Oh, and they are down. Nice. And can you explain the one standing there on the... Yeah, so he's crouching up on that crate, and he stabbed you once. Right. Can, can I... Um, how did I miss him stabbing me? How much damage did I take? Oh, he tried to. He might have missed you. Okay, okay, good. So I'm going to... I'll attack him. Hitting AC, 13... Just missed. All right. All right. Um, Horn. I'm gonna blow poison at that guy on the cake on the on the crate. Okay. I've got to make a on save. Uh, that's a fail. <laughs> okay. All right. Good. Let's let's uh, let's let's, let's uh, get rid of these guys. Ah, twelve. Oh, and he's down. <laughs> So I'm doing really good on the damage rolls after that one failed one. <laughs> yeah, that's right. nice damage. Uh, Brule, you are back in action. But All you right. take uh, you use half your movement to get back up. That's okay. And then oh, there's a giant pig monster attacking. <laughs> <laughs> I cast friends on the big pun, big pink monster. I think we gotta kind of press our advantage here. <laughs> So I think I'm so. going to use my five hit points left on my lay on hands on myself and move towards that door. All right. Uh, we'll 10, search 15, these bodies 20, after 25. we're done. Yep. Um, Theris. Same thing, pushing up with them. All right. Um, so you're how, there. How many hit points do you have going? No actually, you could, you could dash there, Mr. Cleric. Yeah, let's dash up to the corner. All right. Um, Dave. 
I'm going to move up to right beside him. All right. Can I try and, to uh, go back into stealth, actually, as I'm moving up? You can roll a stealth check, sure. <laughs> She's right there. You're Jason oh. Gordy behind us. 26. What did you roll? 26. 26. So I'm going to say that you get to here, because you have to have somewhere to hide. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. I like stealth checks where people do, they're like in a desert, and there's like nothing around, and they're like, I rolled a 24. Yeah, where are you hiding? If there is a place to hide, I have a 26 to apply to it. Right there, right on the corner. Perfect. Thank you, sir. And um, the cleric, actually, once you get here, you see Megan here is just chowing down on a meat pie at the table over there. And it is uh, Hart's turn. Okay, uh, can you move me right up behind um, Theris and where I can actually see Meg chowing down on a meat pie? Yep. And I'm really tired of these halflings. <laughs> and uh, Kagan- Mission accomplished. Keg in hand, I'm going to throw another chromatic orb at her. All right. Well, she took one, so she's in rough shape already. Well, yeah. I s oh, she's going to take another. Oh, God. That's uh, going to be a 19. Nice. All right. It That's hits good. Meg and the meat pie. Both explode, and it, you can't really tell the halfling from the meat pie on the wall. Sounds like a Johnny Cash song. <laughs> so, all right. So you've come to their last little uh, sleeping quarters here. But there's no Milo. Milo's the one that we want. Milo's away. don't see away. anybody else, but when I'm, who's going to go in first? I'll go in. I'll yeah, I was okay. going to say, Dave, can you? Everybody's Dave, like, I don't know. <laughs> search. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't want in. I didn't want to steal anyone's thunder from that triumphant blast. That's and uh, yeah, you see that there is um, some kind of room over here, and there's a door here as well. All right. Let's move in, uh, move up and search Meg to start it off. For sure. While they do that, I'll go and check the door. And I'll gather uh, the other bodies and fish that stinky guy out of the water, I suppose. All right, and um, it seems like the um, the door is locked. It appears to be locked. And there's a bed just around the corner here the wizard finds. All right. Well, I'll start unlocking the door. All right, why don't you do a uh, dex check? Okay. You know what, I'm gonna use my investigative skills and oh. Man. Kind of like poke around and look for things in, in the bedroom here in the bookcase and paying in particular to see if I could, because they, they said there was another keg of ale around here somewhere. So I'd like to find that. Okay. But if you happen to find anything else useful, that's fine too. Of course. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> they probably uh, keep it somewhere yeah, safe, course. like the locked room. Um, okay. I have a uh, a really pathetic confession to make um i can't find lock picks in my inventory it's actually the oh I'm, it's probably it must thieves be tools inventory. thieves tools yeah oh is it thieves tools? it's thieves tools yeah yeah, yeah they're they're not in here but I, have, <laughs> I have a tinder box and a torch yeah <laughs> well you could uh, you could try to bash the door down whop, whop, got a lock pick whop, called my axe <laughs> yeah we'll have to deal with that Let's search Man. these guys up first, and then we'll take care of them. Wait a minute. One of these halflings is bound to have a set on them. Let's just take a look and see what we can find. One of these that's, little... That's a really good point. One of these little boogers is going to have at least a lock pick on them. Hey, Jedi mind trick DM. Hey. All right. So um, you search the other halflings. You find enough gold for five each. And uh, you find a couple of torches on them. And... Uh, a key. Well, there you go. And a set of thieves tools. <laughs> Thanks, dude. We're golden now. <laughs> what, what are we pulling off of Meg? You know, it was so hard to admit that, but thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, yeah, Meg also has a key on her. And um, the wizard doesn't find anything of value in this chamber here. But what is the rogue's role to open the door here? My role was a 14. Okay. Steve, do you want to try a key? Successfully unlocked that door. Um, and you find 
inside a halfling tied up like those other prisoners. And you find a treasure chest and a barrel of Queen's Ale mead. Oh, boy. <laughs> well. A barrel, not a keg. Well, a keg, a keg. <laughs> no, I was assuming it's bigger. We got more. No. <laughs> it is a, it's, it's heavier for sure. Nice. Well, first, is the halfling alive? He is. All right, well, we'll drag him up and sit him in a chair and... And he... uh, Untie his mouth. Okay. Not his arms and legs yet, please. He says, thank you. I I didn't think I was going to make it. I thought I was fish food for sure. Who are you? Might still be. My name is Tully McFaster, but some people call me the disaster. (laughs) (laughs) And why is it every other halfling here has been a jerk, but you seem to be tied up by the jerks? Yeah, they're horrible people. I was trying to do something about them, but uh, I thought my friend, uh, he's a great fighter. He was supposed to meet me down here, but I ended up having to do it by myself. It's a really bad idea. Yeah, well, I know that now, but you <laughs> saved me. Mm. You're not going to do anything horrible to me, are you? No, quite the contrary. <laughs> what was? Oh, I'm not in that room. Hold on. But mm, take All a right. seat, and I'll take whatever Meg was eating, and I'll slide it over to him, and I'll be like, "Have a little bite to eat." on tie like one of his hands oh thanks he said hey are are you adventurers was it all the yeah i don't yeah yeah it was all it was was all that you know i i didn't think i can become an adventurer too maybe i should just stick with you first one for our bag we got this right (laughs) uh well you know we might be recruiting in the future. I've got skills. Well, what kind we'll of skills? see. We could certainly use a man who could uh, gather some information for us. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. I can do that for sure. Um, right. What does the robe do in the treasure room there? Oh, I inspect the chest for sure. Okay, so the door was locked, but it appears that the chest isn't. Okay. Can I cautiously open it? Yeah, how about sure. check it, dude? Check sure. It. And um, you find enough for 20 gold for each uh, dwarf. Oh, okay, Ooh. I'm writing that down. We're doing uh, You find a spell scroll. Oh, nice. Harn. What? Wait, this may be of interest to you. I you found the ale? With the spell hold person on it. Nice. And um, two potions of healing. Beautiful. And a very interesting note. Oh. Well, I'll inspect the note and hand the potions to my friends. I scored really well on the last chest we discovered, so I'll, I'll just take the gold. But uh, can I read the scroll? Yeah, so apparently um, the note outlines an agreement between the wild gang and a noble family called the Von Bladens. The Von Bladens. You know uh, now are connected to that um, crest. And yeah. you, uh, Dave actually followed one of the Von Bladens to the high district. And um, so it seems like extorting businesses are the main activities um, of the halflings as well as smuggling weapons to the city of Bladen. Uh, It looks like the uh, Von Bladens take most of the profits and the gang keeps the nobles' hands clean. And the nobles um, have agreed to keep the the wild guard, the city guard, by bribing them and keeping them away from the halfling gang. And uh, the leader of the gang, Milo Hilltopple, meets regularly with Cyrus and Rock Von Bladen at the Evenglow Manor in the High District. Could be where he is now. Hey, one second. Can you repeat that last bit that the Silas and the two guys and the- Sure. Yellow... 
So there's arrangements here that Milo meets Cyrus von Blauden okay. and Rock von Blauden regularly at Even Glow Manor in the uh, the wealthy district. Even Glow. Yeah. Even Glow. All right. Okay. In the high district or fancy district, what's what's the district called again? The high district. Yeah. High district. And you actually tracked that one noble yeah. to the gates of that neighborhood. Okay. So where did they, where does that note say they smuggle the weapons to? The city of Blodden. Hmm. Do we know anything about a war between these guys or any sort of between Blodden and Wild? Uh, no, I mean, we're new to human stuff, so I wouldn't. Yeah, really... you're from the north in the mountains. You don't know this area. So, Blodden, as in like Von Blodden? Exactly, yeah. B L A D E N. Okay. And since uh, combat is over and you have a chance here to rest, you actually do find out that the one uh, piece of leather armor you find is magical and it changes size for whoever wears it, and it's plus one leather armor. Nice. And you also find out that short bow, that unique short bow is a plus one short bow. Well. Basically, yeah. we're arming up our thief here, so. Oh yeah, our rogue's just getting right. jacked right up because none of us wear leather except for you, so enjoy, my friend. Oh my god. It's like, this is really fine armor, and I might wear it to sleep in at best. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Make Enjoy, my friend. She had the keys on her? What about the keys? Um, yeah, we got keys, and we, we really, I, I really need to have that other keg. I really got to have it. We've got oh, yeah. that other keg. Okay. All right, before we have a short rest here, while we're in this, I mean, unless you want to play that through, can we get the heck out of this spot before Milo comes back? Yeah, I'm with you because I'm pretty beaten down at this point. Yeah. We'll take our little halfling buddy with us. He might be useful for some information at least. All right. Possibly. And we'll let all the humans out of the cells. Are we going to lead them out? Yeah, they still work for well, a the of cooks are thieves. still very happy to be cooking for these guys. Maybe I'm just kind of inclined to let them be found by Milo. I think we leave the cooks there to be same thing, but we pull back. Yeah, but then then they're gonna say that it was it was four dwarves. Is that or they're gonna say that anyways? That's true. This is where we that were, part Hmm. So now they know there's a new faction in town, basically. Man. Yeah, he's going to be coming for us. They could just think that we're thugs. Yeah, they have no idea where we came from. I mean, I say we pull, fall back to Fleming, grab our kegs, grab the gold that we have, pull back and get some more information. Absolutely. Right. And the people of Fleming already like us quite a bit. Especially that one in. Yeah, that one in. So, Andrew, real quickly, that letter, was it just an agreement? Was there a signature, a seal, anything official about it? Or like, well, it was just communication, like correspondence? Yeah, there was, it was signatures from Rock and Cyrus von Blodden and Milo. And um, so it yeah, could be it looks incriminating. Like, sorry? It could be incriminating then? Yes. Yes, it's a clear agreement uh, between basically two organized criminal groups. Now, the Vaughn Bladens, are they a rival of whatever passes as a king in Wild? If they have um, a king or a council or whatever they got yeah, going on? You're not sure yet. You're really new to the city. You, remember, you do have... Uh, you know, that contact, Balden, who uh, obviously thinks well of you guys because you retrieved his axe. I know, but we brought down a lot of... I don't want to bring pain down on the old guy. Well, that's one thing we fall back to Fleming instead of back to to Balden's place. Yeah. 
We have to keep our clothes, cars close to our chest too, possibly with this for a while. And then maybe we use this halfling as a courier to kind of get us some information from the city. Because the thing is, I, I think it's best for us to get out of town before the corrupt town guard comes looking for four dwarves. Well, especially seeing as that says that he's paying some people off. It's like Yeah, exactly. But to be clear, I'm really looking forward to extorting the extortionists. <laughs> you know, I, I, I like the way you think there. <laughs> yeah, these humans, they have no sense of right and wrong, that's for sure. They're all backstabbing each other. Strange. And uh, Tully says, well, there's some halflings involved in this too. Very good point. So let me get this straight. You guys are planning to head into the woods for a while and you want me to find out what's going on in the city? Hmm. Well, that depends. <laughs> I've been debating with myself if you're actually Milo, because we've never actually seen Milo or what Milo looks like. And you're all just... never seen anybody. This is our first day in town. <laughs> I mean, we just kind of got down the rabbit hole on this one, to be honest with you. <laughs> but this letter also incriminates Milo. It's true. Are you kidding? Why would I be Milo? He said, I came down here to try and do something about these people. So who is the fellow you came down here with exactly? Trying to see if he meets, matches the description of the guy we left tied up in that storage room? Uh, he's a great warrior. He's really tall. He's about 6'4", human, lots of muscles. He's the greatest warrior in all of the world of Mir. Obviously not, because he never made it down here. I'm sure Carol's <laughs> rolling his eyes right now. I think he just got, he was just late. <laughs> so your friend sure he'll show be, up. Your friend could still be coming. Yeah, he could be coming, yeah. But if you do head out of town, I could come and uh, find you and tell you what's going on. Well, why do I, get check on this guy. I want to know if, how sincere does this guy say, seem? Ah. Yeah, can we do, can somebody, actually, you know what? Uh, can I do an insight check on this guy? Just That's to... what I just said. Insight check this fella. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, maybe the cleric has a, the best insight. Yeah, that's what he was saying. Yeah. I, I'm with you on it because insight. <laughs> Woohoo. Not too bad. 18. Uh, yeah, no, that's, <clears throat> you guys are second level. That's really good. So you're pretty sure he's on the level. I've got insight plus four. That's <laughs> he's pretty straight up. Nice. Hey there. Uh, yeah, you dude. think he's on the level. You think he's quite he's being honest. Yeah. I trust this guy. I think he's telling us what's right. All right. If we can get a runner between Fleming and Balden, I think it'd be worth it. And your whole point is you got to stay out of sight of these people. Get it? Yeah, I got it. I got it. No problem. Where are you going to be? Where are you going to be uh, hiding? Let's see. That was the something giant. Was that the inn we were at? Yeah, the sleeping giant. Sleeping giant. Yeah, it was the, um, we got the dead orc inn, the lonely unicorn. No, those ones we haven't been to yet. We yeah, got to check in The even glow. glow. We have so many to check out. We have to check them all out. <laughs> gonna do a, a the crawl? purple rabbit was Baldwin's in. The, the purple rabbit is Baldwin. Yeah. yeah. All right. So you're going to head back out of the city, back to Fleming in the Wildwood? Yeah. Uh, okay. Mostly because I have a feeling the town guard's going to be looking for us very shortly. Yeah. This all is right. why we're going to do this as quick as we can. All right. So um, you head back out of the city with no problem. The guards don't stop you or anything. Um, you get well, through that done. secret. You get through the illusion entrance, the secret entrance. Uh, Can we get out of the city a little bit before we do that? <laughs> no, we're we're fine. They have a barrel of water, like rinse off the blood from the armor and the weapons before we go into the bar. Um, so you, on the way to uh, the forest, uh, it starts to rain. Um, you don't see many travelers on the road. It's um, later in the day and the weather is terrible. And uh, eventually you get to Fleming. And of course, 
the staff at that uh, that inn are big fans of yours after you uh, dispatch the hobgoblins. So they have a room for you. And nice. you get a chance to have a full rest. Cool. Yay! Nice. Uh, the morning comes uh, and you wake up quietly. It seems like a very peaceful place. You hear uh, songbirds in the woods. And um, a couple hours later, uh, Tully arrives downstairs in the tavern and uh, has news. All right. Right. Hey, we got two kegs of ale. Woohoo! Wait, so, uh, we have one keg of ale. No, actually, uh, yeah, it's. Well, it's it's been twenty four hours, right? Yeah, yeah. So we have we're out of ale. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. Just, All just right, put it out there. We're gonna need to get some more. So don't mark. We're in and in, but <laughs> but this is the good stuff. So Telly comes uh, to meet up with you, and he says that uh, there's no. Um, it seems like there's nothing unusual going on in the city. The guards aren't looking for anyone. There's town criers in the city who deliver news, and there's no word about uh, the wild gang, and there's no search going on. And he also went to go talk to Balden, and Balden um, uh, says that he has someone that can get you into the high district. Okay. All right. Well, then it mm. seems like it's safe for us to make our way back into the city. Yeah. Uh, and uh, into the high district we go. And into the high district we'll go. Well, if we got to find this even glow place. All right. So you head back into Wild, and there's no problem at the gate. Um, guards just let you in. And uh, I don't it's trust early in the that. morning. I don't know why. I'm very paranoid about that. It's right. early in the morning. It's um, it's not too busy yet. Uh, oh. And um, you head over to the Purple Rabbit, and Balden introduces you to a half elf called Travis. And this half elf um, says that he works in the High District, and will have no problems getting you past the guards. Uh, there's a special, there's a special group of guards who guard the high district. They're called the Queen's Guard. They also um, are on duty at the castle for the Queen. And he says that he knows these guys really well. And uh, because he works in the district, he can get people in and out. Okay, so guys, before we do this, can we rest somewhere overnight? You did at the end. We did at the end. Okay. Like, I know we can't, we kind of blitz through that. Um, is there any way we can um, do a little bit of quick time traveling. And I want to hide that letter in that inn. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to find a place up in the rafters or someplace. No one will ever find it. Um, make sure that, you know, um, the rest of the guys know, know where the location as well, okay. where it is as well, in case I, you know, deep doesn't make it, but I, it's, it's in a very powerful, I think an incriminating letter. And I just want to make sure, um, it's it's always safe. Is that cool? Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. Okay. All right. And it could be an insurance policy for us as well. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So Travis takes you to the high district. Um, it's surrounded by a high stone wall. Uh, the gate is guarded by four of these queens guard. They're humans with long red cloaks and black chain mail. Strapped to their backs are huge great swords. Dude. And... Um, the gate is actually flanked by two crescent moon statues as well. And these uh, guards say, uh, what's your business in the high district? And Travis goes, uh, hey, you guys, you know me. I just work, uh, you know, I work at the Goodwin Manor over there. Uh, you know, it's, they're with me. They're new cleaners. And uh, the Best guards say, in town. <laughs> One of the other guards goes, hey, yeah, that's Travis, man. He's good. He's cool. He gave me some of that herb the other week. Um, <laughs> let them in. So uh, they let you inside. Um, so this area, to your left, you see a large barracks, and there's more of these Queen's Guard. 
to the right, there's stables. And then the rest of the area is uh, beautiful mansions, um, elegantly designed homes. And um, there's actually trees dotted through the area as well as um, gardens and a graveyard right at the center. So as Travis walks you in, he takes you over to the gardens and says, uh, it's, this is a good place to hide, he says. Um, I, I told you there'd be no problem getting in here. So uh, I'm not sure what, uh, what you're doing for Balden, but uh, I know he's a good guy. So I'm gonna head off to work. Flip him a coin. Thank right. you. Thanks, good luck. So we're in these gardens? Yeah, right in the center of this uh, district. There's uh, gardens by a graveyard. And then you can see a number of uh, manors. And actually, you're right on the edge of a lake, too. Hmm. The right other on. side of the city is a lake. Wow. OK, so we're in the high society now. How about a place do we look here? Well, since you're hiding in the trees and bushes, you're you're all good. Yeah, yeah. But if we weren't, we'd stick out like. Uh, people might think you're servants at one of the manors. Okay. I'm gonna <laughs> casually whisper to my to my um, fellow companions. You know, you know. I bet you if we find an inn in this district, I bet you they'll have really tasty ale. I think I, I, I picture these four dwarfs just poking their heads up behind the behind no, this I tree. We should go see. We can <laughs> <make it>. <laughs> well, it tastes. Oh, that queen's ale is delicious. I bet you we could find a whole bunch of that stuff here. Wait, so this being the high district, we got the Thane son here. Play it up, dude. Oh, dude, I actually have. He pulls out. He's like, they make you a letter and he's like if anyone gives us any trouble i'll flash this and they'll read it and that'll be that so i belong here while we're in this area where his anyone asks servants we're here servants. looking for a manor for my father to buy because he wishes to oh wow be amongst the humans more All right. i'm an official ale tester yes <laughs> And my personal spiritual advisor and my uh, my man. <laughs> every guy needs like that guy that just does shady, shady things for him. Uh, Dean, <coughs> where'd he go? Dean yeah, does sound shady. like the name of like uh yeah, like a a scribe or a helper or something. Yeah. This Come is here, my Dean. man, Dean. Yes. But like stuff. in reality, you know, he's my <laughs> we will take care of this for you <laughs> yeah how come he always has armor on oh no reason <laughs> all right so you're in the district it's the morning you're just in the garden area as i said the graveyard's right in front of you and then there's um different manors dotted around the area all right so the first thing i'm going to do is go into my pack and like pull out my nobles outfit and put the tabard on over my armor and make myself look appropriate to the area i'll i'll, I'll do my best to help him clean doff, myself up a bit his armor quickly <laughs> braid up the beard and like make myself look a little more presentable than i am when we're just out adventuring i'll, I'll brush my beard yeah exactly <laughs> you know all of us give ourselves a quick disheveling and then like i kind of look at everyone i'm like <laughs> I cast prestidigitation just to get rid of the smell. Yeah. And oh, then, good. Uh, Thanks. Oh, I was starting to get used to it. I'll try to so cater to Brawl and like carry his armor and help him with stuff and make him look way oh, more. I'm, yeah. And I'm, I'm like, now the key is walk like we belong here. If somebody of a lower class looks at us, don't even acknowledge their existence, simply keep walking towards our destination. Uh, as soon as I see somebody of note, I'll get us directed to an inn where once we're there, we can... We're looking for a particular manner, correct? We're leave, looking Ever for Glow. even glow. Everglow, thank you. Everglow is the high-end alehouse, correct? Even, no, no. even glow is right. Even glow, yeah, sorry. 
even it's even glow manor that's where yeah. yeah what's his face is that's where the van blodens are hanging out at his all right glow. well given their ridiculous wealth it's safe to assume it'll be the biggest one around or close to all right, so you look for the largest uh, building and uh, there is a beautiful Gothic style mansion sitting right on the edge of the bay on the other side of the graveyard. Um, like the other manors, a uh, sign indicates the name and it mm -hmm. says Even Glow Manor. Wait, 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 so hold on. <laughs> right on the edge of the graveyard, overlooking the bay. Yeah. Like, is there a permanent cloud over this thing? Uh, there is some mist coming off the lake that seems to hover near the building. <laughs> and um, there is a uh, drawbridge that's the only entry point as a high wall surrounds the, the uh, manor. Holy cow. Um, oh, wow. You see two men in brown studded leather armor standing outside. Uh, one seems to stay at the drawbridge entrance while another goes inside. Um, they're both armed with halberds. Um, and then Deed notices something very unusual. As you get near the manor, you can just make out there's large doorknobs at the front doors and the iron doorknobs, iron red doorknobs are uh, carved like human skulls. No way. Oh, well. Yeah. I, point, I, I point it out, I'm like, Mm-hmm. Um, Let's find an inn. Well, at least they're not dwarven skulls. And I would well, it's only I humans. would point out that, that humans just like let this guy live here. I know. What These the people heck, are freaking man. weird. <laughs> so are we just gonna stand here rubbernecking? No, we're looking for an inn. Just keep <laughs> walking. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to see Mount Mordor over here, okay? All right. <laughs> I'm so, shocked, but even glow. There is no glow here. <laughs> I was expecting, Castle like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, you do notice there doesn't seem to be much activity. There's no, um, there's no torches on anywhere in the building, it looks like, um, even though it is morning. There's, you don't see any movement. Uh, you don't hear noise coming from the manor. Um, and you check the district. There's other manors, not as big as this, not as nice. Uh, there is no inn. There's only the uh, Queen's Guard barracks and the stables look like they're for the guards as well. Uh, there's a few docks um, nearby with some really beautiful ships, like smaller <laughs> sailing ships. And um, yeah, that's, that's what's in the area. And um, we're gonna pause there.